Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Mel from Mel Did It Herself, and I'm a social service worker turned furniture refinisher, DIYer, small business owner, and content creator. I've learned everything I know about these industries thanks to people who shared their knowledge on the internet, so I'm paying it forward by bringing you my tips, lessons learned, and sharing my journey in this space with you. So thank you so much for being here, being curious, and being a lifelong learner like me. Let's hop into it. Welcome, 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 my friends. Okay, so I know this podcast is about all things furniture refinishing, but before we jump into the nitty gritty of how to do these refinishing projects, things I've learned when starting a business and all that other good stuff, I thought that we should first start with a more kind of high level talk about the reasons why you should choose refinished furniture instead of buying new, because I think it's important. And chances are, if you're tuning in here, you're probably already well aware of the fact that refinished is the way to go, but there might be some things that you've never thought about before, so let's jump right in. First and foremost, choosing refinished furniture over new is a more sustainable and environmentally friendly choice. And it sounds straightforward, like, yeah, duh, because you're making over a piece of furniture that already exists. But it's so much more than that, because not only does choosing that option stop pieces from being thrown out and going to the landfill, but every time that option is chosen, it's also one less demand for a new product to be created as well. And then over time, if the demand decreases, I'm no economist, but I know a little something about supply and demand. Of course, to make any sizable difference in the amount of production of new furniture, that would require a pretty substantial shift globally, Um, but there's truly no better time to start than now and individually. And if I'm being honest, it really doesn't even end up feeling like a sacrifice that you're having to make when you're choosing refinished. Once you take a look at all of the beautiful furniture pieces that exist out in the world that have been refinished locally or even nationally, globally, etc. Wherever you live though, I can almost guarantee there will be at least one person within or near your community who is upcycling, who is refinishing, who is restoring, or who is painting old and unloved furniture. And it's all about being able to find them. So do a Google search, look on Instagram, keep an eye on the Facebook marketplace listings in your area, or just ask around at local thrift stores, antique dealers, or even paint supply stores, and I can almost guarantee that you will eventually find yourself connected to somebody doing this kind of work. When I first started trying my hand at refinishing furniture and discovering the huge community on Instagram, I was honestly so surprised to see just how many makers and creatives were on there and the transformations that they were able to make on their pieces. When I started digging deeper to find others doing it locally, like I would search, um, for example, like certain hashtags, um, or I would search within the location feature on Instagram, search for my either kind of suburb or my city or my province even. I found so many people doing their thing on there and we now have a little group chat that we've set up and we have over 20 refinishers just within my area, like my city and surrounding area. So they are out there. We're just kind of quietly doing our own thing, plugging away in our garages with our earphones in. So you might need to do a little bit of digging to get to us, but I can assure you that we would love for you to have one of our pieces in your home. And as much as I like to choose sustainable options when I can and when I think of it, I'm definitely no expert in the area of sustainability. So I decided to put my university degree to work for once. (laughs) and do some research to pull some numbers to help paint a picture. Okay, and I promise that's the last time I'm going to use that voice. I think that was twice now. (laughs) So furniture that gets thrown out and ends up in landfills is referred to as F waste, um, and over 10 million tons of it ends up in landfills annually in Canada and the United States. 10 million tons. And if 10 million tons is maybe hard to visualize because um, I have absolutely no understanding of units of measurements myself, so fair enough. Uh, One ton is about 2,000 pounds, and that's about 907 kilograms for my non-Canadian friends, which is about the weight of a fully grown white rhinoceros, if, you know, you've been around one of those lately. So visualize 10 million fully grown white rhinoceroses, white rhinoceroses, uh, in the landfill 
every year. Okay, great. Moving on. So actually, something that I hadn't really thought through too is the fact that the pandemic has increased that number by quite a bit because so many companies are deciding to scrap their office space and a lot of the time they're not taking the time and the intention or the intentionality to make sure that the furniture that they're getting rid of is being reused, uh, repurposed, or recycled. And so it's often just getting thrown into the garbage pile and taken away and ending up in those landfills. So just as an aside, if you are someone who is involved in this kind of a process at work and you're able to make those decisions, uh, it wouldn't hurt to advocate for listing those pieces for free online or look into recycling options that would be applicable just to avoid having to leave it out for garbage day. Making that number increase, you know, we can each kind of do our own little things to contribute to reducing those numbers. And then when we think about our own spaces, opting to put a piece of refinished furniture in your home will help to keep those pieces from ending up in the trash and contributing to those crazy 10 million ton kind of numbers. And you might be thinking, oh, one dresser, yeah, that's going to make the difference. (laughs) No, no, it won't immediately. But (laughs) the more people that choose this option individually, the more that it will collectively add up and make a bigger impact. And then it'll be the trendy choice, so more and more people will do it. And then, yeah, that dresser will have ultimately made a big difference. But I don't love the whole fear-mongering approach to environmental improvement because nothing good in this world starts from a place of shaming and blaming. May I repeat, nothing good in this world comes from a place of shame and blame. So let's talk about some other benefits that you can more tangibly see and experience when you choose a piece of refinished furniture over buying new. One of the things that I love most personally and think really is a selling feature is that every time you're getting a unique, one-of-a-kind piece of furniture for your home. Have you ever gotten a new, like, um, maybe a buffet unit for your home from one of those higher end furniture stores and been like so excited like you spent all this money but you found this piece and then you think it looks so good in your space and you're it's just gonna drop people's jaws and you're so excited to show it off and then maybe like a friend comes over for a wine night and you're just like oh my god I forgot you have to check out this new buffet unit I got And then she comes over and she takes a look and she's like, oh my god, no way. I just got the exact same one. Isn't it awesome? And you're like, oh, so I'm not so unique after all. (laughs) Well, I'm here to tell you that you are so special and so unique, my friend. But you've just been shopping in the wrong places. That's it. But there's options. When you buy a painted, refinished, or restored piece of furniture, you're getting an individualized design done specifically for that piece. And if you do a custom project with a refinisher, that design can be made specifically to complement your home's decor and style. So it's literally made just for you. And could there be similar pieces out there that exist in the world? Yeah, sure. Sometimes there's only so many ways to do a white and wood combo dresser, but it certainly won't be a cookie cutter match or replica to mass produced pieces. So there's that. And what I find really interesting is that there's always history behind a piece of refinished furniture, whether you happen to know it or not. Sometimes clients come to me because they have a dresser or a dining table or something like that that they've had for decades, or maybe a set of nightstands that has been passed down through the generations that doesn't currently match the style or the vibe of their home, but they want to keep those heirlooms and heirlooms, heirlooms? heirlooms. I'm going to go with heirlooms. (laughs) Um, And those memories close. And there's been times um, where I've actually pulled desk drawers out of a desk and flipped them over just kind of while I was refinishing a piece. And I found notes taped underneath that say things like, this is the last day that I will have braces with the date, like the date that they wrote it, I guess. Um, Or I've discovered crayon scribbles on the bottom of a coffee table from a toddler years ago who the client is now telling me that child of theirs is going off to college. So all of this history and all of these memories and moments captured in time is living in this furniture. And I'm honestly such a sap and I find it so sweet to hear the stories behind a piece that I'm working on and I love being able to retain those little reminders on the piece whenever possible like if it's something from their 
child who's now going off to college like I'm gonna do my best to not cover that up because how cute is that to have and maybe they can pass that down to their child and their eventual grandchildren and like that's so sweet to me the history of a piece and what it represents lives on too, which is so cool and so sentimental. As someone whose grandparents passed away when I was relatively young, it really is special to me that I can have the same pair of nightstands that my grandmother used to use in her bedroom, sand them down, restain them, have, having them looking fresh as ever, and have them in my room and get to see and appreciate them every day. Not to mention, they're already the perfect size, perfect shape for my space, and they now match the style, too, after having refinished them. So what a unique and also useful way to keep her memory alive and to be able to hopefully pass it on to my children one day. Not to mention, honestly, like, let's get real, they just don't make furniture like they used to. Have you ever tried to lug around a dresser built in the 60s? Well, I happen to do it far more often than my back and shoulders would like me to. And let me tell you, they are friggin' heavy and solid as hell. Lots of solid wood, quality craftsmanship, and designs that stand the test of time. You don't see the melamine and particle board that's used these days uh, at a certain four-letter furniture retailer that shall remain unnamed and with refinished furniture you're much more likely to come across things like dovetailed joints rather than dowels holding a structure together and if you have no idea what dovetail joints are stay tuned for upcoming episodes i'll fill you in actually that's a great reminder have you subscribed or followed this podcast yet because if not here I'll just take a quick pause so you don't miss anything. You can pop over to the podcast page and just subscribe or follow. Good. Got it? Awesome. Thanks so much for your support. Uh, It really does mean the world to me, though, truly. Um, Anyways, so also kind of random, but when I was thinking of the benefits of refinished furniture over the new stuff, you know what came to mind? Have you ever seen that YouTube video where they light a fire in two different living rooms or something like that side by side and compare a room that's filled with older furnishings versus a modern day one? I swear I've had to watch this at like every job I've ever had for some reason. It just ends up being like a health and safety video that gets shown when they're doing, I guess, like the overview of fire safety. Um, It might just be like a location thing or maybe my colleagues aren't very creative. I don't know. Uh, But it's actually really interesting because like if I remember correctly, the room with the older furnishings does catch on fire quicker than the modern one. But the modern one catches on fire like maybe 30 seconds later or whatever, but burns exponentially quicker and basically the entire room is like catastrophically on fire and full of smoke while the room with the older furnishings that started on fire first um it just has like a throw pillow on fire at that point so am i saying that it might be more safe to choose refinished over new i don't know i'm not a firefighter but um you can take a look at that video, um, take a look yourself, decide which you feel more comfortable having in your home, and just make your decision from there. Okay, cool. So I'm doing a really good job at avoiding the fear-mongering. Great, great. But really, maybe rather selfishly, the number one reason that I think that everyone should consider buying their furniture refinished over new is that you're supporting your local economy by spending your dollars locally and ultimately putting money directly into someone's pocket. So you're supporting their small business or big business. We're all about big big business energy over here. Uh, And you're supporting their dream of entrepreneurship while getting a really great piece of furniture in the process. Have you ever seen those TikToks or like memes or videos where it's like every time my small business gets a sale and it's a video of customers like a customer walking out of a store and two girls are working at the cash and they turn to each other after the customer leaves and just start like excitedly jumping around being like, hell yeah, we just made that sale. That's essentially me. That's me sitting in my dining room at 10 p.m. on a Tuesday when I get a message on Facebook Marketplace from someone saying that they want to buy that cedar chest that I've had listed for eight months and I was convinced that wouldn't sell. That's me sitting in a work meeting at my full-time job, knowing that I'm in a dry spell of not having sold any furniture for two months, and glancing down at my phone and seeing a message from someone saying that they want to buy one of my pieces, and having to hold off on a happy dance until the 
work meeting is over. It truly is supporting my dream of being able to do this thing that I'm so passionate about. And every time that you're supporting one of our small businesses or our big businesses, uh, it's one step in the right direction towards us being able to do this full time one day. And if that doesn't warm the cockles of your heart enough, because we do take every purchase we get so seriously, because we know how valuable it is, and that ultimately buying a piece of furniture, no matter where you get it, is an investment that you're making, we do everything that we can to make sure that it's a great customer experience for you when you buy refinished. And I say we as the collective kind of refinishing community, because I do see this intention and this care taken in like so many people that I follow and um, so many people that I look up to. So I, I am kind of making a generalization here, but I'm kind of making it from an informed place, anecdotally, I guess, at least. So for me, when I sell a piece, I'm giving it a thorough look over before the person picks it up. I'm cleaning it. I'm putting a furniture salve on the wood to moisturize it and make it look rich. I'm shining up the hardware. I'm handwriting a thank you card. I am including extra paint for you in case touch-ups are ever needed. I'm including the name of the paint color and the paint company in the card in case you ever want to get a matching piece done in the future. I'm sweeping my porch and my walkway off so it looks clean and looks inviting for the customer coming to pick it up. I'm moving my vehicle out of the driveway so you can pull up close to load the piece. And I'm posting my excitement for the sale on my Instagram because I am genuinely so happy and excited for every piece that I sell. So that's my why. That's why I love refinished furniture and why I really think that you should consider looking into it if you haven't already. If you aren't already sold on them, take a look, see what's out there and just notice the difference and appreciate the art, appreciate everything that goes into it, and I hope that maybe I I provided some food for thought as you move forward in your decision making. And I would love to hear your feedback too, so I would love if you would head over to my Instagram, which is Mel Did It Herself, find the tile for episode two of the podcast, and leave me a comment, because I want to know why do you think it's important to choose Refinished over New, or What's your reason for doing so? Or what are the f- most favorite things that you enjoy about choosing Refinished over New? Because I know that there's so many things from a user's percep- perspective, from a client perspective, that I'm maybe not even considering. Um, and I would love to know how you feel that those little touches go into the work that we do and why you enjoy it. Like, if you're a client, do you enjoy seeing, you know, that piece that is being done for you and seeing the steps behind it and seeing it being posted on social media and having people be like, oh my God, what a beautiful piece. Like that would make me so excited to get that piece into my home once it was finally completed. So I want to hear it all, whether you're a previous client of mine, a potential client, a fellow furniture refinisher, or just someone who's maybe, maybe going to dip their toe into the refinished world. So head over there. Again, it's Mel did it herself on Instagram and leave me a comment. I would love to hear. And something you may not know about me, I love little motivational messages. They literally always get me so fired up and I keep a running list of ones that are especially catchy or speak to me in the notes app on my phone. So I'm going to end every podcast episode with one of these that I've noted down over the years in hopes that you leave our time here each week feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to take on whatever comes your way this week. So this week's Mel's motivational message is, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. Some good old Dr. Seuss, because These things don't have to be complicated, my friend. And sometimes when it rhymes, you kind of just remember it better, am I right? So remember that you can steer yourself any direction you choose, whether that be when you're choosing where to get your next furniture piece from, when you're trying to decide what your next move in business is, or just when you're trying to decide what to make for dinner tonight, honestly. You have agency, you have the ability to choose, and you are, let me repeat that, you are smart enough to make the right decision for you. So don't overthink it too much. You got this. 
If you are enjoying this podcast and are getting value or even just entertainment from it so far, I would love if you would go to the podcast page on whatever platform you're listening on today and leave me a review, preferably a five star, but I'll leave that part up to you because that will just help get this pushed out to more people for them to discover and join us on this furniture refinishing ride. And if you feel so inclined, feel free to share it on your socials for someone that you think might appreciate the episode. All right, that's it for now. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys next week.